Felton coming to you again from the sanctuary of Trinity Christian Center. This message this morning, I know is going to revolutionize your life. Stay tuned and watch this. Stop what you're doing and watch this. Be blessed. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind me and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Can I say, can we say amen? amen. But I want to look at this verse 13. Brethren, I count, count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing. I do. Somebody say, I do. I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth into those things which are before. Amen. Listen, I'm going to teach this morning. It's going to be a two-part title, and you have to get this. Touch somebody say, how can I forget, can I forget? when you won't let me? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Touch somebody else say, how can I forget my past? If you won't let me, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord, amen. Amen. How can I forget the things that I've done if you won't let me forget the things that I've done? Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Do you not know the past is extremely powerful? And if you put it out of context, it will paralyze anybody's life, remembering them for what they did and not appreciating them for what they're doing. It can overshadow the development of what God is doing in your life. Amen. And here Paul is talking so adamantly to the, to the church of Philippi. Amen. And he's encouraging them, forgetting those things that are behind me. And if anybody had an opportunity to say, forget what I've done, it had to be Saul. Amen. You notice I said Saul. Amen. Because he was not Paul, but he was Saul before he was Paul. And Saul was a part of him that did a lot of treacherous things. Ratchet, killing the church and thought it was of service getting a decree from those who were in authority to go out and listen, persecute the church and thought he was doing a service unto the Lord. Paul is basically saying this, if you cannot forget what I've done in time past, you won't appreciate the apostolic anointing that is on my life. You will constantly remind me of how, I, how they laid garments at my feet for, for stoning Stephen, even though I had nothing to do with it, but they paid homage to Paul and the Bible said, and they laid them at a feet called one Saul of Tarsus. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Sometimes people, can't, sometimes people can't get past that God is using you in a mighty way because they can't get past your past. Oh my goodness. Somebody said the power of the past. Do you not know when Paul, listen, when, before, when Saul was in his process of being converted, listen, they, they had to present him to the apostles. And the Bible claim, declares that when he stepped into the room, the air went slap out the room. Amen. People were saying, how in the world would you bring him here knowing that the things that he did to us? Sometimes they were remembering what, Paul, what Saul did to them. But they had not come into the knowledge of what the Holy Spirit is, was formulating in his life. And sometimes the frustration of who you were gets in the, in the way of what God is formulating in your right now. Saul would say right now, I've been touched on the road of Damascus by this one named Jesus Christ. He blinded me. He knocked me off of my beast. And I, and I begin to see him and understand that, listen, I cannot be the same one that persecuted the church. Jesus asked Saul, why do you persecute? Who am I persecuting? Jesus Christ said, me, you're persecuting, Saul. You're per how, how, how long can you kick against the prick? And in this, in this confrontation, we see Jesus Christ personally step from eternity into time and pull out who he wants to use. Tell somebody, I can't help if he wants to use me. See, one of the things I'm going to teach this, you got to get this, you can't help how God called you, but people can remind where he called you from. You cannot help this anointing that's in your life that you're able to see things in the future and manifest it right now. You can't help to be able to teach and eisegete and exegete scriptures. You didn't, you didn't call yourself to do that. You can't help when God steps out of what he's doing and pull you into what he's doing because people don't look at the process as much as they look at the person. It is not the call that people have a problem with. It's the person that's in the call that they have a problem with because they can't get, they can't wrap around their mind that how could God use you? 
And these men of God that walked with Jesus and they ate with him and they, and they fellowship with him. Now Jesus is putting his hands on people that we don't even think that should be able to walk with him. But I'm so glad that man don't make the rules. I'm so glad that God can look past our faults and look past our mistakes and pull a miracle out of our mess. Because God does not need anybody else's approval to pull who he wants to pull. Oh, y'all hearing what I'm saying? If anybody would have been imagined Saul of Tarsus would become an apostle and write over two-thirds of the Bible, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. It is not how you start a ministry because how, who you are in ministry is not the man or woman that God found. And sometimes people get frustrated because they can't get past the found you. When he found me, yes, I was smelling like Newports. And, and yes, I was smelling like chicken grease. And, and yes, I was in the, my hat was all tangled up. Yes, I didn't have it together. But that's where he found me. Oh, my goodness. Tell somebody, say, he found me. Some of y'all, he found in bad relationships. He found you when your mind was just confused. But you can't help when God snatch you where he finds you. And people can't get past your past. Here are these disciples that walked with Jesus wanting to embrace him but was rejected because of the things that he did. The thing that you do can never overshadow what God is doing. While he was trying to learn Jesus, they was trying to find reasons to keep him away from Jesus as if he wouldn't qualify to follow Jesus. And sometimes people can remember what you did said and what you did before you met the Lord and they try to reason, are you really called to do what you called to do? Because I remember when you was out there, you did this and you did that and you did this and you did that. And God said, don't you, you look past what people are saying about you and press your way to what I've called you to do. Tell somebody say, my miracle and my mistakes. Amen. Amen. Sometimes that God said, I want to use my people mightily. But my people have to get past the fact that when God calls you, people remember where you was at. And God reminds you where you're going. So that's why when we, when we talk about what we're doing in the things of the Lord, people will always remember, well, I remember you had to go to jail. So what? Paul and Sil Silas, they was in jail. Can I get a witness? Oh, y'all hearing what I'm saying? Can, I, can, can we go there today? Amen. Oh, God could never use you because you had a baby out of wedlock. Did you not know Jesus impregnated Mary before she was wed to Joseph? God said, I can use anybody at any time. Don't you let anybody put in a measuring stick on you. You couldn't use me, Lord, because I had an abortion. God said, I'll look past your fault and forgive you and not letting your past paralyze where I'm taking you. Because if you can get past yourself, then I can use you. Somebody says the past. People will remind you every day of what you've done and never embrace what God is doing. I used to do that, but I don't do it anymore. And why, why is it what I used to do becomes more of an elephant in the room than what I'm doing? It makes good people that's trying to turn their life around feel like they're not doing anything right. No matter how well I do, you still remind me of what I did. No matter how much I line my life up, no matter how much I watch the way I talk, watch the way I walk, it, it doesn't matter because no matter what I do, you're always going to remind me of what I've done. And you cannot see the Christ inside of me for the crisis that I've come out of. And you always remind me of the crisis. Yes, I did it. Yes, I was at a different stage when I did it. And yes, I dropped the ball. But don't, if God will hand me the ball, don't remind me of how I dropped the ball. Tell somebody to say, he's talking about me right now. We argue more with people about what we're doing than doing what God called us to do. <laughs> because people will hand you your, their application. Fill this out. And if you feel this out, then I believe that God is using you. But Saul, was Saul before he became Paul, listen, the Paul that's writing in, in, the, in the Philippians is a different mindset from the Saul that was touched by Jesus on the road to Damascus. Sometimes, sometimes we have to understand that we all in here had a Damascus road experience. When the very thing that God has brought you in confrontation with, that God will blind you to some things, the Bible says there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end is destruction. And God will come and invade our lives. One thing about the Lord, the Lord don't ask you to do anything. Can I get a witness? How many of y'all got young children and they say, Mama, knock on the door. Daddy, knock on the door before you come in my room. The devil is a liar. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? 
It's like the Wild Wild West, baby. I kick the door in and look uh, because I don't have to have permission to come into a life that I'm supporting and pushing and feeding and girding and undergirding. I don't have to have permission. And God said, I don't have to have permission when I snatch you off Damascus Road and blind your eyes and begin to show you your life in a whole different perspective. One of the things is, is, is knowing the truth. But when the truth comes to you, it's a totally different experience. When you Listen, when you know the truth, and you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. But when the truth comes into your life and say, you're going to do it this way, and, and I'm going to show you a more perfect way or a more excellent way, and don't worry about what people said about you, what you did when you was out in the world. That's forgetting those things that are behind you, and you have got to press towards a mark in me that no one can see the mark except you. Mm. Somebody say pressing pressure. It's pressure to press towards the Lord when people are pressing you down. I know y'all gonna get something out of this. Put, put this on Facebook and Twitter that. Snapchat it. I got it right this time. Snapchat that. Amen. <laughs> it's hard for you to be positive when you got people pressing you down. It's hard for you to try to move past the mistakes of your life. If you measure by what you did wrong in your life. It's hard for people to embrace the God inside of you. But when they can, all they remember is the godliness that you did in this world. Listen, we can come out of the club. We can come out of the streets. We can come out of relationships, ungodly relationships. We can come out of things that we, we can pull ourselves by the power of God out. But listen, no matter how much we pull ourselves out by the power of God, people that don't want you to progress will leave you right there. They will leave you right there. Can I get a witness? Oh, God, I'm getting, I'm, getting, I'm getting to lose my name off the Christmas list. Amen. We got about, what, seven, about three or four more months left, really. Five months before Christmas. And I'm already off the list. <laughs> listen, listen. It's more prevalent in relationships. Budding relationships. Marriages. Oh, my goodness. If I start talking about marriage, man, I might have to get the security team to get me up out of here. <laughs> Somebody say, my past. In a budding relationship, when a woman meets a man or a man meets a woman, and they begin to know things about that person beside their hips, lips, and fingertips, beside how big their chest is and this and that and the other, you begin to explore the things about them that makes you realize that, am I going to go through with this or am I going to stay by myself? Because when you're courting, you have that option. You have that option to just say, you know what, it's not working out. But when you're married, it's not that easy, amen. Do you not know it's a lot of things that married people find out about that significant other until they get married? <laughs> Uh-oh, I'm getting deep in here. Holy Spirit, help me. <laughs> can I get a witness so much so that people will say listen when you're courting and you begin to uh, divulge some of the things that you've been through it's up to the individual to say I believe I can handle this and sometimes if a woman really likes a man or a man really likes a woman listen he won't tell them or she won't tell him everything for fear of they might run away I can't tell him that right now. We doing real good. Now, if he find this out, he ain't going to want nothing to do with Nima no more. But then if he, if he loves you, it does not matter if you had a baby out of well. It does not matter if this that happened. If he loves you, he can handle what he's about to hear. If she respects you, she understand that that was a part of your life, but it does not measure your life. And if, you can't, if they can't get past that, then they're not, they not really. Listen, they might can be with you physically, but can they be with you emotionally? Because 75% of a relationship is emotions. Oh, if you think you get married every day, you and, you and brother flip flop and sister sweet thing will be in the bed. I mean, we just, it's just love land. The devil is a liar. That's why we need to get the children's ministry up going fast because I can't go there like I want to go there. Amen. We'll be right back after these messages. Amen. But y'all know what I'm talking about. You think you're just going to be just walking around the house. Ain't doing nothing. The devil is a liar. 
75% of your relationship. Notice I left 25, 25% of your relationship. Yes, it's, it's, it's living together, you know, going to bed, doing different things. But the lion's share, three quarters of your relationship is emotions. Three quarters of the relationship is this, is that person that's in your life. Know things about you that people don't really know. And periodically they'll bring it back up because that's how the devil works. He does not work from external things. He works from internal things. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I'm going here. Listen, do you not know? That's why we as married couples and budding relationship and the body of Christ, we cannot develop like God wants us to develop because the enemy will come in like a thief in the night and remind you about what she did or remind you of what he did. And God say a house divided against itself cannot stand because you still reminded him or her about them. Help me teach this Holy Spirit. I know some of y'all want me to shut up, but I'm going to cry loud and spat out. Can I get a witness? Tell somebody, say, can you handle this? Most people can handle marriages. Most people desire a relationship. But you have to understand, you have to deal with somebody else's emotional state. And when you understand, when they begin to divulge themselves to you and tell them, this is what happened to me. I was molested. I was raped. I had to do jail time. I had an abortion. Can you handle my past? Or will my past paralyze our relationship? Can you handle the fact that I come up through hell and high water and it affect the way I do things as a man or a woman? Can you handle that? Because if you can't handle it, you may kiss my lip and you may open up the door. You may say I look nice in the suit, but you cannot be with me if you cannot ultimately handle the truth in my life. You knew this before. You said I do. Oh my goodness. And how can I, how can I, listen, how can I move forward? How can I forget my past when you won't let me? Somebody say history. Everybody in this room has history. Even a little infant baby has history. How he kept mom and them up all night long. He or she got history. Everybody here's got a story. Everybody here has got something that God did for them in time past. And you're not who you are now because you, did, you dotted all your I's and crossed your T's. It is the people that made the most mistakes have the greatest testimonies. We're overcome by the blood of Lamb and the word of our testimony. And your testimony might not be as rosy and as rose petals as the next person. That's why the church has gotten away from dealing with real issues. Huh? And we just fluff people up by telling them what they're going to get. Huh? But then you not know you got some seasoned men and women right now. And you got some seasoned men and women of God right now that the enemy is still holding them hostage of things they did years ago. Huh? Things they said years ago. Huh? And God said you can't get to your present because you always tripped up by your past uh, and God said you got that some point in your time understand that yes I made a mistake and yes I dropped the ball but that was in my past uh, and you got to start periodically letting people know don't bring up my past uh, tell somebody say don't bring it if you can't appreciate what God done brought me through I uh, and you still talk about the tears of yesterday when you're not looking at the triumphs of today. Don't bring up my past. Don't you bring up what I did with Billy Bob and, and Susie Bob and them back in the day. Don't bring up how I used to smoke weed. Don't bring up how I used to run dope. Don't bring up around people. Thinking that no people will bring up your past when God bless you with people that's pushing you to your future. So what do you mean, Bishop? Sometimes people don't get activated until they see you with a new crowd. And then they stop out in the new crowd. I remember when she used to get drunk. I remember when he used to sell drugs. I remember when she was having sex. He said, you know she had a baby out of well off and God said they will remind the new people of all the mistakes that you made but you got to forget those things. Oh my goodness, I know I'm teaching this right. People don't remember until they see you going somewhere that they can't go. What we like to call it, they like to tear you down. When God is building you up, 
they like to remind you no matter how well you preach, no matter how much you go to work, no matter how much you do this and that, you always got a voice that will whisper to the new people, oh, somebody's going to get this. God said, I'm raising up some new faces in your life. And you're going to have some old faces trying to tell the new faces about the people, the person. I remember she was a mean as a rattlesnake. I remember, I don't see her like that because they will bring what you used to be into your blessed place. And listen, how can bitter and sweet water come out of the same fountain? You must understand this. You, if you're not talking about what you come out of, don't allow anybody else to talk about what you everybody's got history oh y'all hearing what I'm saying Moses led millions through the desert but Moses murdered a man and buried him in the sand everybody's got history oh y'all hearing what I'm saying Everybody you think deep got something that they don't like talking about. But God said, don't remind yourself of the mistakes you made. I, listen, when, when, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Behold, all things, all things have been passed. Oh, my goodness. I'll forget your sins. The Bible says God declared he will forget our sins as far as the east is from the west. And if God can remember it, can forget it, why is everybody talking about the marriage didn't work out? The devil is a liar. Why is everybody talking about you don't have a job, you got laid Why is everybody talking about the thing that God done delivered you from? Why is everybody still talking about you went to jail and you done did that six, seven years ago? Look at somebody and say, that's my past. Oh my goodness. There are two types of people that's in your life. It's people that will walk with you when you did, and there are people that's walking with you while God is doing. And the dead people always confuse the doing people. Because the dead people remember what you did, but the doing people remember what God is doing. That's why you can preach it, you can teach it, you can do the things in the body of Christ, and you get around somebody that know you back in the days. Keith, preaching? Are you serious? Somebody said, that's the dead people. Those are the people that I did things with. And they just can't wrap their mind around that Keith is an ordained bishop. And God is using him in a mighty way. But the people here, that's while I'm doing it, you understand me. You understand where I'm at because we're all doing the same thing. Amos said, how can any two walk together except they agree? That's why the dead people will never agree with them because you're still trying to stick me in the box. You're still trying to remind me of what I used to do. That's why I can't have you over here when I have sister so-and-so them over here because we're talking about the things of the Lord. And you're talking about how we used to run crack and how we used to smoke dope and jump rope. I can't have you over here while God is doing a new thing. Oh, y'all hearing what I'm saying? I'm good to go where you have you ever been doing something that God called you to do? And listen, and then you find somebody that remember you while you did what you did, what you did. Somebody say the dead people. They never get past what you did. They just keep you right there. And you can be around a person that God is doing a new thing, and they embrace you as the woman, the man of God that you are, and then they step on the scene. And you be like, Lord have mercy. I wonder what they're gonna say. You know, that's elder so-and-so, that's prophet, that's a prophet so-and-so, that's evangelist so-and-so. Yeah, I re- but yeah, I know the evangelist now. Yeah, I know he's a bishop now, but I remember. <laughs> I remember. I remember when we used to go to the club. I remember when we used to get, you remember that time we got, here you was talking about the things of the Lord, and they're trying to talk about it to somebody that they don't even know. How do you introduce yourself to a person talking about the person that they got a relationship with? Is anybody in the building? If any man or woman was courting, I like to use the word court. I'm just old school. If a woman or a man was getting to know a gentleman or a gentleman getting to know a lady, and that particular person see their ex come in the vicinity. Oh, y'all know y'all know what the deal is. (laughs) Now you got to get all proper. You be like, hey, how you doing? Yeah. This is your new friend? Yes, yeah, this is her. You know, like, you know how we do. Hoping that they will leave. Because, because people remind you. Suppose you, see, see, the person you are in the Lord is not the woman or man you were outside the Lord. And I want to, I want to, I want to get to this right here. Tell somebody, say, that's all they remember. <laughs> I don't care how good you do. Sometimes that's all people want to remember. That's how you cuss them out. 
And that could have happened way back when Michael Jackson sang Thriller. <laughs> Can I get a witness? You could have had your Thriller jacket on. <laughs> and then, are you serious? You, I remember what you did. No matter how good you do, there are some people is still in the, but I remember stage. There are some people that can't get past your past. There are some people that are paralyzed the fact that God chose you. There are some people that didn't want to embrace Paul and Paul is writing what he lived. I forget about all the things that people said about me behind closed doors. I forget about how Peter was acting funny when he got around certain people and I had to call up. I forget about all the things, but I press. It means that what I'm going after is more important than what people say about me. One of the things you must understand is this. It happened and there's nothing you can do about it. Tell somebody say it happened. Don't let people live in what happened. You, God is happening right now. It happened. There's nothing I can do about it. My life was at a different stage. But if you don't have enough Holy Spirit in you to begin to rebuke people. Uh-oh, I didn't say the devil. Rebuke people from allowing the devil to use them to remind you what God brought you out of. Hallelujah. You cannot allow people to have an audience with your life and overshadow what God is doing. If you can't see no more than what I've done before I met the Lord, then you're not really with me as I'm serving the Lord. Because if you embrace me as the man or woman of God that I am, you won't be acting like this. There's some people around your life right now trying to get you to cuss and trying to get you to drink and trying to get you to do stuff to just to say, oh, I told you that they wasn't ready. I told you. that." The, and God said, and we play right into it by letting them talk about what you did. And God said, stop it. Forget those things that are behind you. And listen, and rebuke people as the enemy uses people to remind you of what happened. Oh, y'all got to get this right here. Is anybody in the building? Listen, I want to talk about this right here. I, I got to get to this. Overshadowing. You can be doing great. You can be doing great in a marriage. All the married people say hallelujah. Listen, I'm out of time, but I'm not out of word. Listen, we are excited for what God is doing here at Trinity Christian Center. Listen, for my marriage ministers to our Youth Blast program, phenomenal. You got to get here and experience what God is doing here at the sanctuary of Trinity Christian Center. So until next Saturday, be blessed. Thank you for tuning in to this morning broadcast. It's your season with Bishop Keith Felton. Trinity Christian Center is located at 7935 North Tryon Street, Charlotte, North Carolina. Service times are at 11 a.m. on Sunday and 7 p.m. for Wednesday night empowerment. For more information and events, follow us on social media. Come join us at Trinity Christian Center a place of love and a center for change.